Hey guys, Chase here. Today we're going to be checking out AT&T QCI 7 versus QCI 9. This is AT&T Consumer on the highest plan with the Turbo add-on. $7 a month gives you access to QCI 7. This is US Mobile Dark Star, which is QCI 9 if you don't pay for an upgrade. So we're going to get these queued up here. They are both on the US internet server so we'll we'll just get a baseline on both of these first and see what we're averaging 102 millisecond ping i will say the at&t network in my area is not the best although recently upgraded though my tower used to be stuck on a 100 megabit per second backhaul and the most you could ever get was like 70. so it's now upgraded and you can get more but i live kind of on a sloped downhill so my signal from at t is not very good. So it looks like 96.8 on the down and 2.71 on the up for the QCI 7 phone. Let's run QCI 9. If you're unaware of what QCI is, it's basically the priority difference. So QCI 7 is one below the highest priority on team or on at t QCI 9 is the bottom of the barrel, the slowest, last effort priority so you can get technically qci6 but that's only through at&t business and you have to be on the highest plan i did have access to that plan at one point but i do not anymore so i can't test it so for qci9 looks like 93.6 on the down 2.93 on the up so basically within margin of error here's where things are going to get really interesting when i hit go on both of these at the same time what we should see is this phone pull priority and this one gets slowed down. They both have truly awful pings. And this is exactly what I expected. So we're still getting upwards of 90 plus megabit on the turbo phone. And 15, 18? It's going to go up now. More like 20-ish on the QCI 9 line. Both have over 100 milliseconds of ping. QCI 9 is worse overall on the loaded pings. Yeah, 3,600 3, there for a second. That's 3.6 seconds of uh, loaded latency. That's awful, by the way. We'll run one more at the same time, just to see. Again, with that awful ping, Turbo is actually worse on ping. The at t tower in my area does have 5G, but it does not have 5G+, plus. I just have it turned off because it's worse performance than the LVE is. So it looks like 95 on the down for the QCI 7 phone, 48.7, although that's a little bit skewed because it stopped, it got a little faster when the other phone stopped. 1.83, and then 3.31 on the upload there for QCI 9. Interestingly though, the Turbo phone has three bars and the Dark Star phone has one bar. Not sure what that's about. Why don't we head into field test and see what we see there. So hopping into field test on these phones, it looks like this one is on probably anchored to band five. This one is now anchored to band two. So that does make sense. Band five is gonna give you more range, um, but they do, they will carry your aggregate bands. So this test is just, this test only really shows what band you're anchored onto. They will use all of them in the download test. But anyway, let's run one more. All right, kind of switch these up. Let's do a coveragemap.com test. If you're not aware of what this is, it is Stetson Doggett's wonderful app that allows you to map cellular coverage in your area. You will notice the iPhone on the left here is running a somewhat um, beta version of the app, but the speeds will remain basically the same. At the same time, I'm basically what we're going to see is QCI7 is going to take off. Main QCI9 is going to be left in the dust. Yep. So basically, if we assume that with, um, if we assume that we have 100 megabits of total throughput in this area, AT&T Turbo gets roughly 80% of the bandwidth if it's competing with a QCI9 device. Um, if you have QCI 6, the split is more like 85-15. I have tested that. If you follow me on X, at CMXJ underscore 1, I do a lot of um, cellular network report reporting and testing over there. Um, feel free to follow me there if you want to 
stay up to date. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.